only one of the two, regardless, it's double melee, and Gangplank will come through yet again. I have seen this matchup a lot. Gangplank into the melee champions, a little bit easier to tag them with the barrels, trading back with yeah, the... As they're going to be easy for him to pick up. Yeah, expecting a difference of five. Now, Bafra taking some damage, but has the shield available, finds a slow and a Zay, so one more auto could be a chop as well. The flash in, and that's the flashless Braum. That will be a kill. It's actually claimed by Biofrost. So they're all coming mid. And they're walking over as Niski still has the flash. The big play up towards the jungler, who is flashed us now himself. Mowgli goes down, and now the fight continues on. Over the wall is stick safe, but this is still a lot of punishment on the CLG support. C9 are the first ones with the control ward. Niski holds the wave in front of his turret. The CLG is not going to find that stun right there. Jumps right back to his own minion wave. And now he goes once again now oh, towards Wigley. Wigley, towards PUE. They got a lot of damage here. They're going to find not quite the stun. The shot but pulls him back in, buys the space, but Sven and gets the kill all the same. Braum disengages PUE. Ezreal True Shot Brush, not going to be enough, but maybe. Power difference at the moment is too high, so Cloud9 easily able to sneak in there. But will they get punished now? Ruins here has a slow. Actually, this could be enough. Sneaky does have flash. Holds over to the side. Now, big damage in the Zazel, though, who is summonerless. And Sticksley does claim that kill. Second round of the chase. Not going to find a kill. It will burn Sneaky's flash, though. And Ruins sticking around. Picks up something big. But now, oh! Niski with the solo kill. Triforce is done. And so is PoE. Now out of the top lane. A push continues with Shelly. As C9 going to get themselves some turret pressure. CLG will claim bot lane first. But it will be answered by that. Yeah, oh, so easy. makes that ultimate very easy and clean. Ruin, he's going to try to get away, and it will be a trade. Solo kill sneak. And looks like they're going to be able to clear away mid-wave and not lose that turret either. Yeah, very good little pincer there from CLG. They get the win. Far. He is willing to do so. Nice job knocking down the barrel. Walks away pretty cleanly, but CLG... Here we go, pressure on to that tier one turret in the mid lane, down below half HP. They've got to respect, though, what Sejuani might do for an engage. You've got a Kali coming on the wings. There's the first stun. Here comes the hard engage for Aurelia. Hits three with it, and the charge is in. Will they reach the back line? Seal, you got to disengage. They pick up one, but it's traded back by Licorice. Quickly, pop the stopwatch. Has to buy a few more seconds. Health bar. Very, very low. Grabbed now by Biofrost. Looking for the re engage. Shockwave on the two. CLG, can they claim a second kill? It's on the ruin now, and Niski finds them. PoE's at 12 HP. Woo! A stopwatch dot is an auto attack. But oh! still has the follow up. And it's three for one. Cloud Nine take the team fight, and they will take the outer turret as well. Yeah, and they can transition on a knife's edge at this yes. moment in the mid lane. CLG had just started pushing back to heavily. walk to them. Going right away. Shockwave down. Most ultis are gone. It's really only top oh. and Oh, Trundle, it's Stixay, just knocked oh. down in the middle of the map. No jungler around, a clean pickup there for the C9 side. PoE forced to run away, Niski puts on some damage, and a Tom Kench brings him to safety. A single turret falls elsewhere, but wow. that one will go down. But Midland's under fire, Lick is going to grab that one now as well. Has his own ult back up and still has his flash. All right, the pressure continues. C9 now closing in on the bottom half. Another minion wave arrives. And Sneaky should be able to get an auto off. Oh, they get a lot on a ruin, though. Stun, but grabbed by Tom Kench. No glacial visual landing just yet. But across the back comes the rest of the squad. Big damage out of C9, but the turret is deadly. They've got to run over this one. Redemption could find some damage as well, or at least start the chase. And Midley wants to go forward, but has to respect what the disengaged tools are from C9's side. Looks never gets right over onto that one. The turret stays alive. No kills. Yeah, Licorice is actually towards the mid lane, pushing that minion wave. So CLG tried to take that opportunity. Really nice counterattack, but C9 just return to the objective. They take down the Trier. Not able to get any red buff for himself. He's zoned up in Power of Evil, and Biofrost is backfilling as you see Sneaky coming around, finds a bit of damage, ults right over, goes for the big play, and just jumps right back out. Doesn't manage to bait the shockwave, but they do kill the turret. Tier 2, final one is gone. Mid gone now as well. Inhibitor left open. Way four, but the pillar's been used, and there's not a lot of other engage tools. Shockwave delivery's not there, and a clean pickup on the bear and Cloud9 pushed. Yeah. Got damage, but no way to lock down their targets. They're gonna find Ruin now. They're gonna go for the offense down towards Gang. Plank does happen to dodge the first ulti eaten by Tom Kench. Runs right away. They are gonna keep their top laner alive as spells and summoners are burned, but mid lane is under fire right now as well, and Cloud9 feel comfortable with this one. Juking away is Sneaky, not getting true shot. Barrage finds the shots on the bottom. Inhibitor turret now as well. Mid inhib is cracked. The bot one now open, and CLG have yet to find their way in. It's been losing control for 20 minutes. Shockwave is going to find a bit of space towards Niski. No easy escapes here for the Aurelia. Could take the damage, has to flash away. Gangplank not going to find the opening just yet, as GA is also still available for that mid laner. Siege continues. Redemption by some base P. We look at the damage on Niski. Cannot quite knock that one down. Goes to the big play. That's GA popped, and now Sven Skirin's coming around. 
PUE can't find his way in. He's smited. He's taking a lot of damage. He's going to flash in for more kills. And Rune's going to drop as well, make it a second as the mid laner finally does die. And a 5v3 is all that Cloud9 need. They will push CLG back to the fountain. They will knock down the turrets, and C9 will take down first place CLG. Five and three heading into Rift Rivals. Incredibly powerful 1v1 situations and a lot of mobility down. on the champion. Big cost to him. And that's what we're looking for. Stamped in the top side, though, forcing Fake God Flash flashed. to dodge the W. Oh. Can't get the knock up, but one more out of means just done. There it is. And they will nake him down. Fake God. Pretty doable die. Fake God summoner list does have an ult, but that is it. When do they go in? Burns the E, gets some damage across. Here comes the attempted stun, but look how tanky Sejuani is. He's not going to be perturbed by this turret at all. And a very clean, easy kill. Does have flash and spite. Actually has a chance of going for a steal, but now zoned out by Wadid and does not want to get devoured. So that's a quick pick up there. Nice one, and now looking at a sleep towards Ryu, does cleanse block away, but now ring is towards Wadid, and this time he is isolated. Will go down to amazing, so a one for nothing. 100 Thieves Very are quickly on. in the way of there 100 Thieves. Bang has been a big force for the squad of late, as now Fake God's on the way out. That's the flash way, still getting stunned. And now a second time, over the wall comes Viper. Stopwatch buys a couple of seconds, but you have to assume they have the damage. Actually even burns his own ultimate. Gets nothing for it. Several big cooldowns are gone. The bot lane has fallen all the same. 1,200 gold, 100 thieves all through bottom lane. Ooh, Bubble barely misses there. Big hit on the Ryu, but he's gonna stay alive. There is Herald summoned up. This will be all the plates and at least second turret going towards Viper. So still trading these resources back and forth. Minimap. It is going to be at the cost of this dragon. Uh, Sejuani just picks it up right there. And that is going to be FlyQuest with some regeneration. And a ward here. Santorin might get pincered. Okay, this could be an engage. They're gonna find the first stun on towards Rakan. After we're gonna find the charm though. Knock up Henry as well. Jumps back to the team. Is gonna go down to Viper. Hitting over the top there. Do they have the damage? Nice jump by the 80 carry. Bang gets away from Camille. It's still, they don't have him anywhere nearby. This is an easy spike for Amazing as long as he's on the rest of the squad. And here comes Zibaralty. That's gonna be claimed. And now, what about the second half of that fight? Big damage. Get a little bit of extra move speed next time to get there quicker, but <laughs> it's after the fact. And what Sejuani a bit easier later on. And that'll be taken down without much issue. Picking up a bit Indeed. more. And 15 seconds on the Baron respawn means that's going to be the apple of 100 Thieves' eye. Right now, the top four v5 defense. Viper's committing to pushing down the inhibitor turret. So this now puts the pressure on 100 Thieves, and they're the ones to blink. They lose the game of chicken. They're going to leave this right now and try to stop their base from falling. FlatQuest picked them apart, and they go for the inhibitor. That one's almost certainly going to drop. Mid lane out are going to go down as well, and just like that, the game has swung. We're running up the river. It's going to be a quick answer at 100 Thieves. They have to get there quickly. You can see Fake God, do I answer bot? No, I've got to get in for this one, because they are running for this one. Teleport chosen to be used as well. How they burn it? Do FlyQuest kill it? They're even on a ward. Second TP used, down to 6,000. They might be able to burn oh! it. It's going to be close. Can the spike come over? Can it over the wall? Spike does go to Santor, but how about the team fight? 5v5, and Zoe's already gone. The second kill goes through to Wadid. Baron for two. W, if he finds a way out of Santor, that pillar could have been it. Not quite, though, but it will be turret damage. Demolish here as well. That is inhibitor turret gone. Inhibitor itself is going to drop as well. Fake God is still in the base. 4v3 Siege, but the respawns in 8 seconds. So after this inhib, out they go. Baron power play is Level neutralized. 16 himself has the full crit multipliers. Viper, Ooh. big damage, finds his side. Look at that burst! Oh my word, almost kills him. Flash, but cannot find Aphromu. So Viper might lose the Garden Angel and does, and he's alone. 1 versus 3, there is not a way out. He's going to be almost stunned, tries to run, looks for a bit of damage, nearly takes down Ryu. He makes it look close, but it wasn't in the end. Good damage onto Amazing. 4,000 health onto this Baron. Centaur not going over. Smite's going to go pretty cleanly over. It's actually Banga picks it up. Amazing did smite, I do believe. But now look at the re-engage. As Afro presses R, looks for the knockup, finds a little bit there, and nice by Wadid. But Centaurica is still with the object of affection. Will not die just yet. Can they still find Wadid? No, but they're running forward. They find the slow. They put up the gray health. He has to burn the stopwatch. And that might be enough for the kill. They put in the damage. They do get that one right as Viper respawns. It remains. And they lie in wait. No vision for FlyQuest in that pixel brush. They're circling where? around and they got him. Finding the engage towards Viper. Does find the shot away, but he's got to be careful. His Pooh Belter is an auto away from dead. They're trying to find him and bang. Does get up that. the mid lane. Inhibitor will be taken. Baron will be the next goal on their yeah, checklist. It will not be a smite steal, so for the teams have zoned out the opposing junglers. And it was initially a 20 minute Baron rush. Now this time around, Baron Trying 3 goes up his 100 Thieves. As their team fight is simply better, and they want to play around the Camille as best they can. 
No isolated members. Poke from Zoe not gonna land. They find almost the engage, but again, forced to flash away third time in a row. As it's gonna be turret down, the open inhibitor is certainly gonna be theirs. The Elder Dragon buff is gone, but Baron's still on for quite a while, and now it's two open lanes with minions flooding in. 100 Thieves closing in on their third win in a row. Damage and a pole belter almost pulls him back. He might burn. He barely stays alive. The re-engage comes in. Not going to find that kill. Santorini eating up. Going to stay alive. One turret is gone. 100 Thieves looking for the play. Out of the back. Land. Stopwatch. Beautiful. Viper's going to go down without anything to his name. And now the Nexus is open. They're going to find these kills. They're going to find their win. Three in a row for 100 Thieves. Oh. If they do expect impact to be taking the chase. Once again, we have our second LCS Silas after the huge rounds of percentage of his own max health. His extra damage right here is double. Oh, he's going to get bound. That is massive damage. But look at the shielding coming back in. There's just enough. They layered it. So Cody Sun not delayed. That's very big. There's a Mountain Drake, which actually in this situation is actually really valuable. Jace. Now your landing is good. Uh, he's ranged. That's going to be a stun, though. This could be really big damage. The Vinyl is going to land. Well, it's going to hit both, but doesn't matter. The shields are in, but Cody Sun will be stunned, and he will be taken down. Double if now on the board. Arm guard done for Huni. Finds himself in a fight against Impact. Puts the shield up. Actually, really good damage here. Now turns back into Jace himself and puts on some shots. They're actually, oh my god! Look at that! Huni presses Burn down the Ocean Drake. Smithy goes for the steal over the top. He has flash to get out of it. Gets really hairy for him, so are they going to go for the fight? But it looks like yes. They find the stun. Who's going to smite this? One, and it goes to Ix Smithy. Cordier J saves Dublin, but here comes Skarner. Beautiful crescendo, but it's still going to be enough damage. I will still take that trade. Drake goes only for a moment because Sichuani is flanking Clutch Gaming. Big damage towards Dublin. Do they have the burst? It's going to be close. Sichuani over the wall. Flash the back. Oh! One more auto. He's a push shield. This time, Cody Sun claims it. The root auto Smithy flashing in. going to find that stun. One more auto gets the kill. And Cody Sun, he is in the wrong spot on this map. Finds the root, finds the stun in his own face, though. And Ix Smithy will slowly but surely. Leaving forward on the top half of the map. Yep. Extra damage when he presses the button, gets that passive to go off. Uh, Zona, of course, double if will get plenty of damage down to the bot lane himself, but it is still two turrets claimed. Clutch Gaming sieging aggressively now into the mid game and have a currently 1,000 gold lead. Double F doing his best to try and catch up on work here on the outer turret, proccing Sheen as quickly as possible and will eventually even out that gold. And now a play towards Jensen in the mid lane. Big damage to him. He's rooted in place, but still devoured and stays alive here. Here comes lane, Dark Jace. Oh! oh! He walked left to get away from Lux and instead uh. looked his own teammate. So it looped around. Now mid lane gone as well. Clutch Gaming in less Side than his step. Minute. All right, well, top ladder is going to go down, though, Team Liquid, as you mentioned. Uh, the, the fact that Clutch Gaming had an outer turret kill bringing the game within 700. Once again, though, a play towards the mid lane as Jensen gets a lot of damage. And Cody Sun isolates himself. He ran downwards and set up towards Liquid. his team. Strike back, able to get the mid lane kill. That means they should be able to get this dragon. 17 seconds left on Cloud Drake, and they're pushing in on bottom. Oh. Demonte's on the run. And there's a fast Tom Kench. Demonte has a turret for safety, but he is still stuck in 1v3. Big ult buys some space, but the damage likely to be there. The tanks are tanky. The damage is there. Demonte is going to fall. Right. Any of our games. As Cloud Drake does go down. Bop. And we have a safety. Made them feel like they were OK. This will not be checked in time. Sejuani's nearby, but it shouldn't be close enough. That will be claimed. The two-man Baron and Lyra just runs right away. And now Jensen's going to be a bit careful as Huni's around. Jumps over the wall. Caitlyn right next to your Lux as the Sona threat is real. One top lane though, steals the Jace for him. In comes Dick Smithy, finds some damage. He's gonna find the Sun and a Hootie now. Do they have the burst damage? Oh, certainly they do. As the rest of the squad comes by as well. Unfair, four to one. And it's not even close. TL picked that one up. The turret's gone and they can keep going for more. What a rotation from Team Liquid. They cut off the split pusher. Push right there, a couple of shots, but it'll region all the way back up to full HP. Demonte does answer his own tier two turret. So something is picked up with the Baron buff and the Luton's Echo, and there's the split. There is the safe right here. Jensen's still pushing the top end. It's actually a 5v4. If they can bring the whole squad around. Silas over the wall. They're coming for it now. They find the first route. They're on the front line. Gonna find a bit of damage for him. Big backline access. The Zero only wants to disengage. Lyra gets out of the shield. And here comes oh! the to one. But the kill still comes through. Team Lippa get that first kill. Jensen claims the second under the turret as Huni running away. Same for Demonte, trying to stay alive. They might just find the next kill. They've almost got the damage, but did they go too far? Team Lippa have low health for it, but it's 50. Again, the battle.
Battle Sejuani claims kill number three. A three for zero team fight, Team Liquid winning the mid game. And we are getting a look at that first damage and also the healing from Sona. Yeah. The sustain for Team Liquid in the mid game, always the highlight in these Sona comps, whether you've got Carrick or not. And Team Liquid will use that team fight oh. victory to surround Lyra. He's gonna have a really hard time getting away from this one. They are all around him. Demonte cannot help. Four unanswered kills. The inhibitor certain to fall. A Drake when they wanted the Baron still 90 seconds away. The inhib is gone. 30 seconds on Lyra to respawn. A little bit of poke from Caitlyn. Not going to mean enough though. And out goes Team Liquid after a huge high ground clutch. Are forced into a bad spot. So they're forcing Baron. They're forcing them to come and fight. Desperation. They find the stun. They pull back Switch One. Look how tanky he is. And he's pulled back by Core JJ. Where is the re-engage? When did the stun land? Expedia stays safe. Protection buys his face. Jets in the back line. Finds a couple of stuns. Big damage out of Lux to the shields over the top, and Lyra running out of health. A big stun for Doublelift. There's the kills, but it's two for two so far. But will it be more? Cody Sun finds his third. It's should be able to take pretty good damage here. Vulcan very low on mana. Like for the sun. They find the slow, they find the stun. The big shield comes out. Look at the person on the kill just yet, but Doublelift can go for the next kill. And he's got the shutdown. The power cord so strong as Vulcan is running. Only find the single root, though. And the next shot will get a double kill. Five, two, and six on the Sona. Looking at Huni now as well. Can he find the slow? He can. That might just be enough. Sichuani comes forward, needs two more autos. They're gonna get the kills. The cleanup comes through. Xmithy is on a rampage. And they're in the mid lane now as well as Core JJ solos a turret. TP comes in from the top lane. His impact now joining in as well. And Team Liquid could maybe close the game out. It's four versus two right now. Waiting 15 seconds for respawns. Another one for the Sejuani. Lyra's trying to run. He'll be shut down as well. Six kills for the battle, Sej. And the second turret will drop. Team Liquid will remain in control of first place as they will take down Clutch Gaming in 29 minutes. Six and two for TL. Looking like it will be, you know, more for that late game. Trying to draft towards that team fight, you know, utilize this as year. The opportunity to go to the bottom half of the map. They'll grab the Cloud Drake, and that is a nice early pickup there for them. Coming back into the meta uh, as he's going up mostly against tank junglers and big Ole. Oh, Ole. Good lord, man! Ole is combo and all autos were weaved in by Smoothie. You know, for the, the loose kind of spark there. The Ooh, contract stepping a little bit too far forward. Going to be found out there. A nice pull means Smoothie's going to find the second kill of the game here for TSM. Yeah, they were not expecting him up here. Now Bjergsen. Froggen's going to be shuffled back right towards TSM now as well. The egg will only delay the inevitable, and TSM are 3-0. TSM really uh, One versus five. Rest He's just peace. waiting for death to come for him. Good night, sweet friends. TSM finding number four. Yeah, but in the meantime, their two members cough get the first turret. It's five bot for TSM. Trundle is pushing mid, so Golden Guardians is actually getting a decent pick back with this. They may come out ahead on the play, despite losing the one man. It's double teleport and definitely uh, what are you doing up I there? Have no idea why definitely stuck around that long. Acadian waiting for the spell shield to go away, making sure he gets the pull. It's exactly how you play Skarner against Sivir, and that's absolutely no reason to go for that. When chasing down a, they're down 2,000 gold. Haunter's not too afraid just yet, though. Contract's gonna be moving up there with him. They're looking to start the fight onto Acadian. It is a two versus three, but it's a fight they're still not afraid to take. Reset. Acadian's gonna fall. That's the reset there for Haunter. Really strong top lane, and they will be able to knock down this mid lane turret. Gold's still very close to the bottom side, and you can see all these wards uh, being placed down here as a result. You know, pink ward here, top lane tier one turret. What many consider to be the least important turret on the map. So, so annoying, and uh, they are going to get a splash as a result. This is one of the things that I always feel like separates uh, the good Anivia players from the great. And here we go. That's going to be an initiation coming out from the side oh, of the Golden Guardians. And Bjergsen just gets knocked down. This will mean Infernal goes the way of Golden Guardians. But yeah, the great Anivia is the show in bottom lane. There is a potential that they can just start up the Baron, but right now it's TSM trying to make a collapse here. This has turned into quite a juxtaposition as Froggen is now going to find himself caught out. 
mid laners out of position. The name of the mid game here as Golden Guardians will lose their mid laner. They will lose that wave clear. Definitely will do what he can, but they will not hold on to the tier one mid lane turret. And that's a big move for TSN. Yeah, that is really big because they can actually in their engages if either team messes up. And big stun though. Now it's going to start off here. We're going to see Smoothie going into the stasis here. Immediately Sven also going to be keeping himself alive just for a moment. Smoothie taken down. Also going to be Ole traded away. TSM on the retreat. Acadian's going to oh, be taken Hunter. down. Hunter's popping off. The wings of death fly through the TSM back lines. And it's a... Creating so much of the action for them with these initiations from the Anivia. The Anivia setting up the plays. Hauntzer will build that number even higher. Pushing down the bottom lane. Four men strong here. Seeing if they can take this to the TSM base. Tier 3 is going to be under siege. TSM, not enough bodies here in time, Azale, and Golden Guardians will put a lot of damage into this turret. Might even be able to take it down. Yeah, I think they're just going to get this one. I mean, Froggen's sitting at over 600 AP with three items, and they're going to go in. Akkadian goes in. He grabs the enemy support, but he sacrifices himself for it. This is Froggen. what I was talking about early on, Azale. One frontliner. If he messes up, all of a sudden, the engage is gone. The ability to start these things off is gone. Contracts and Froggen continuing to look for more. They're able to find Smoothie and take him out but it will be a one for one there. Deathly, Haunter, and Froggen now gonna be pressuring onto the tier three into the mid lane as well. Froggen in some trouble, critical positioning error will be heavily punished. And Bjergsen takes a triple. Yeah, Golden Guardian's gonna get wiped off the map. He gets caught out. Yeah. Bjergsen with the triple kill, who is seven. He gets caught away from the team, but he's on oh, Froggen. He the back line. Froggen's gonna be suppressed, pulled back towards TSM. Golden Guardian's looking to turn the fight right back around. Acadian gonna be taken very low. Hauntzer takes him down, and now he's gone to Reset City. He'll go into the resurrection. Contracts nearly killed himself. Definitely free firing into the TSM lines, but he's gonna be taken low, and Bjergsen is dominating. Two dead on the side of the Golden Guardians. Winning. Going in, knocking down multiple members at the end of that fight. Bjergsen, so strong at this point in the game and definitely really felt like he had the strength to clean up that fight. He's on his three items, but now they are getting pushed in. They will lose at least one inhibitor. Contrax is doing the dragon at this point. So he will be able to trade the dragon back Remember, the Baron is spawning here pretty now they're, now they're starting off. Bjergsen has to flash over the wall to keep himself alive. Oh, they're still gonna make it happen. You bring Bjergsen down, you're gonna win yourself the game, but Haunter's now the one who's gonna be targeted. He has to flash out, but he's taken down. TSM has found a huge fight. The Golden Guardians bite off way more than they can chew, and they'll be absolutely annihilated. They get shredded, but Froggen trying to turn this around. Look at the damage from Froggen. Oh, but now it's nothing but a sunny side up breakfast on the side brush of the red pit. That's Ben going on another kill for himself. Contracts healing up in the brush. Not really a match for Broken Blade 1v1, or maybe he is. Broken Blade trying to put some damage back down onto him. He's gonna Contracts get him. should be able to take him down here, and I am found wrong in my analysis. The Trundle takes down that Jace. And now Skarner versus Trundle, 1v1. Skarner building full tank, not on a Skarner He's fire. got the Warmogs. He's This is not up. a fight that Skarner wins. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. Trundle is the one who wins this fight, but not unless he's alone. The only way you can win this is if you're fighting Skarner fair, and TSM is not about a fair fight. They'll look to hand this one over to Zvan, put more money in the hands of the AD <laughs> carry, but contracts won't waste as much. To give up this Baron, they are in the area here, but Broken Blade, the traps. The yep. traps mean that Golden Guardians have no Caitlyn as well, and it might be what this team needs to push them into the Golden Guardians. And I think is is Sven really to you. move towards these battle lines drawn by TSM, and TSM will take. You told me about it. You were laughing about how much gross stuff you voted <laughs> to put in the smoothie. It's like, All right, come back on, to the game. All right, back to the smoothie on our screens, and the rest of TSM breaking open the base here in the bottom lane. Golden Guardians will have to find their fight here soon. Otherwise, TSM will just run over these inhibitors, but you've got to respect the power of that Elder Drink. Yeah, I think they might actually just try to be waiting it out, right? You try to wave clear as much as you can. Baron's almost gone. 
Broken uh, blade, forced to flash over the wall. Bjergsen now retreating, almost able to take down that mid lane inhibitor. Yeah, so no Baron buff anymore, so you can wave clear this out instantly. Golden Guardians want to actually avoid a fight. There's a minute left on the on the Elder, but they're going to win Golden now. Guardians aren't going to be avoiding much of anything when they go fishing and land themselves a big one. Acadian taken out, but now Ole is incredibly low in the HP department. Got to be concerned about that feel. one. Redemption coming in. Ole will be topped off a little bit from that one. Hauntzer wants to approach from the top. However, there's no way into the fight when TSM can so easily disengage. Acadian's the one guy you can really seek your fangs into. He's the one melee member. Everybody else will maintain distance and continue to do this. With Sven. TSM just looking to out macro. That's going to be a four shot on the inhibitor turret. They'll take down the inhib itself. Golden Guardian struggling to rotate around and answer this in any capacity. Froggen's on the side. Contract's all alone in the jungle. He's going to be found out. Pulled back by Acadian, taken down by Sven. And that is Baron guaranteed to TSM. Sven already there as well. They knocked down the inhibitor almost instantly, and Contracts, you know, is Down's still trying to this. Hauntzer trying to go forward. Sven is the target. Hauntzer still looking to find a little bit more damage on him. That's going to be a big pick if Golden Guardians are able to find it and secure the damage. Hauntzer looking to go even further. Broken now Blade Acadian's going to be the end, target, though. but Broken Blade is in the base of the Golden Guardians. Frog going to be the one trying to stop him. Needs to find the stun. Broken Blade's nearly able to take him down. Oh! Froggen with the clean out play for now. Smoothie's the only one from TSM, even in the area. There will be no contest for this aside from a laser. Golden Guardians, very glad to see that one. There's didn't the get trap set up. Here's Bjergsen sitting on his tower, and Golden Guardians look like they want to get Bjergsen. Ole's going to engage, but it's only onto Acadian. That's the frontliner. That's the one guy you don't want to be Sivir's engaging there. to. You have no AD carry. Your support well, is. Anyway, Sivir was not there. This is going to be yet another Baron going the way of TSM, and they will have this Baron buff for when the second Elder spawns again. Third Elder of the game, but they're actually looking like they want to fight. Uh, be careful. Golden Guardians trying to go for something here. Froggen flashing away from Acadian, keeping himself from getting grabbed. Monster looking for some damage onto Bjergsen there in the back line. Golden Guardians still looking to maybe take the fight even further. Froggen's going to be taken low, gets himself away. Golden Guardians disengaging now, still 14 seconds before oh, Ole is back fight. alive. But here comes the Bjerger King around from behind. The Golden Guardians Redemption. find themselves routed. Froggen's going to be taken very low. Goes into the egg now. They'll have to try to protect him. Golden Guardians grouped up, trying to play protect the president. The VIP is down, and Bjergsen will again find his mark broken blade kills contracts and the golden guardian stands 3v5 2v5 1v5 tsm chasing into the base definitely the last man standing and sven will keep him in the fountain tsm are on the victory march after 49 minutes the longest game of summer split tsm will take down the golden guardian and what a performance by on the Xbox team. You know, four of their champions do have those dashes. It's going to be two days, two Vladimir's here for Scarlet. That is what he won on yesterday against TSM. It's jungle. Yeah, he's not afraid of anything. He's level three versus two. He could take this. Over the wall he goes. And yeah, that one's going to be secured by Meteos no Panda flash now. Panda. In a lot dead. of danger. Yep, one more thwap of the flail. First blood Ouch. drops the gaming, though. Going after the Cloud Drake. Some early game movement speed will help out with these rotations to see if maybe they can come in and threaten this. Dive still probably going to go off here, top lane. One minion left alive. Meteos able to make his way onto the enemy top laner before he can get out alive. And the Aatrox changes to World Ender means no assist, no kill, no reset. Meteos gets himself over the wall. Phoenix can't quite find the damage, and now Scarlet will continue over the cliff to take him down. Back this tank goes up the turret for so, so long, there's very little chance of actually being able to trade back. And with Meteos tanking that on Sichuani, Doka just ignores the Trying turret. Make that last bullet point a little bit more difficult than it has to be, though. Yumi firing off the prowling projectile just to try to ward them away, but considering they have the number. And Dokla has the matchup and has had that success in the early game to dictate it. And what a change for this. Currently having a rough time. Golden Guardian's still around that level, I'd say. They have shown that they're capable of playing some pretty high-level League of Legends, but Optic, one of the teams really stepping up as Scarlet tries to make himself an outplay in the bottom lane. Dokla shows up, but he Everything. will not be able to be able to make an adaptation, to change the way the team communicates and plays, to make that the reality, to make this the reality. Optic Gaming need one more shot to take down Lorlo, but they won't quite grab it. 
Meteos goes down and Optic overcommit in the bottom lane. Yeah, I've got to say, you know, maybe we can watch that one again. But that Expended one... by the side of Optic, looking to make a play happen here. Prowling Projectile finding its way onto Panda. Meteos moving forward, not going to find the stun onto anyone. Lorlo trying to get himself away. He's in the World Ender, but he doesn't have a reset just yet. He's going to get one here in a moment. Scarlet is taken down. Lorlo goes into the reset now. And oh boy, did Optic mess up. Echo Fox will find four. Echo Fox, you're battling back so, commit <laughs> so heavily that they did. Those are not the kind of errors that should even be crossing your mind. If a play can even yeah. go that badly, I don't think you should even be considering it. And now, Optic, cool. put yourselves in a comfortable spot to transition into the next Baron after. Yeah, no, they On are. this Tier 1 turret, should be able to take it down. Scarlet won't walk out far enough to actually contest that. But it doesn't look right. like you no. have to just kind of calm down, make sure you're in a, in a good mental state, and realize that your Citadel you know, has no flash still, and you have your ultimates back. Makes sense. So I think that is a smart play there. The ultimate makes it really hard to continue to chase into that. If you get rooted up, you can start getting shredded by the rest of them. But they're TPing in. They want this fight. Phoenix Ooh. is behind. Hakuo tries to go in with a quickness, but he's not able to find anyone there with the Rakan. Scarlet enters into the pool, and now the counterattack comes out. Off the gaming, trying to make this one go the distance. Panda's going to be taken very low as Apollo's taken down first. Panda follows him into the abyss, and it's 2-0 for Optic. These Meteos ultis to really connect, and the team can follow it up. And now, they're the ones with the Baron. They're the ones back in the grid. Left to take. The Tier 2s and Tier 1s still standing. I mean, there's lots of ways to capitalize as they'll find a kill on the Panda. Looking to go even further. Scarlet likely going to be killed off here. Goes into the stasis, looking to buy a little bit of time. Dokla makes his way into the fight, but they've got the reset on Delorlo. He'll look for even more, but he goes into the resurrection. Phoenix going into the stasis, but so is his opponent. Now it's going to be Lorlo coming back to life. Hawkwell having to retreat here yet again. Echo Fox wants to disengage. Apollo goes into that Feather Storm. He's able to bait them back. Optic continuing to go forward. Apollo continuing to kite. Meteos is down. Echo Fox has won their fight! They're gonna get the loot pinion! Turtle to boot, and look at that negative Baron power play. Now 2,000 gold in the deficit from that power play. They are gonna be losing this inhibitor tower here as well. Echo Fox fighting back. That was on par with the bottom lane dive for optic mistakes that go in Echo Fox's favor. Fox is doing a 4,000 gold lead, most of which, actually all of which, is in the 80 carry difference. As on top the flank here wants to try to go oh, in. Oh, baby, Dokla's gonna be the target, and that is a big pick to start things off with. Scarlet having to retreat now, too. Optic's Lolo. trying to back away, but Lorlo's into the back line. All he needs is his reset, and he's gonna find it. Apollo's on a rampage, and Optic are cut to pieces. They'll find even more disaster as Echo Fox chases further. Scarlet goes into the pool and into the grave as Apollo gets a triple. One more will make it a quadra, and surely the Pinta with the cat after, but they will not even need it. Yeah, they're going to push down mid here. Arrow desperately trying to clear out the waves. They don't have minions just yet, but the super is coming in from that mid lane. They should be able to potentially end the game here. They're going to TP back in. Arrow's got to make something happen, but what I do you think even he's going to be able to do it. I mean, you just have to try to clear the minion wave and, and suicide for that. Big separates from his AD carry. He tries to fire off some spooky ghosts. It will not succeed. Echo Fox will find their second win of the split. And a big one it is taking. A playoff team last time around, uh, barely missing out on semifinals last split. And yeah, I think easily the chance to make that up. Uh, you're a game behind second, right? Like this is, this is, I think, completely fine for you guys. You're going to have the week off, of course, uh, before week five starts. And you said positive mental attitude. I actually heard you say that um, losing the game on your own mistake feels better than losing because they were better than you. Because it's like easy to fix and you'll yeah. win next time. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, obviously it sucks to lose. Sure. Like, you have to just, you know, claw your way back into a higher seed, but. Um... A person who stood above the competition with player of the week. This time around, 100 Thieves mid laner Ryu gets the honors on a 2 0 1. This week for 100 Thieves, three game win streak looks good. Yeah, this was an interesting one to me because 100 Thieves did have, you know, their first ever 2-0 week uh, in a long time. And Ryu did play well, but I don't think it was like some sort of hard carry thing, right? Yeah. Uh, a lot of the players stepped up. I think a lot of players had better performances. And some of this player of the week is attributed 
to them changing players, bringing Ryu in as kind of that unifying force. Right, him coming in, I feel like, is a lot of what led the change around yeah. here. And, and, and so I think there is something to be said about the intangibles there. Um, I voted for Bang. Yeah, I was thinking, <laughs> uh, you know, on just...